Okay, everyone. That's fine. fine. Um, I think we're ready to roll. Looks like we have a quorum. Uh, Madam Clerk, whenever you are ready, I'll do a roll call. Bell. Curran. Here. Freeling. Present. Harrison. Here. Hinkleman. Here. Majeric. Here. Ah. Here. Kitchford. Ballrath. Here. Werfel. Yarborough. Present. Elliot. Here. Mr. Chair, you have nine present, three absent. Okay, thank you. Minutes from a week ago, who would like to move? Moved by Harrison. Is there support? support. Well, oh. I beat you. It was a photo okay, finish. Right. <laughs> I never supported so moved it. by Harrison, supported by Ott. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Minutes are approved. Mike Crombean is in the house, so to speak. Mike, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. What's cooking up in Lansing? I've got a couple of things, so I'll I'll try to run through them here. But if there are questions, feel free to, you know, through the chair, interrupt me or we can take them at the end. Uh, but I wanted to highlight a couple of things that I think have come up in, in maybe individual conversations uh, or collective conversations that uh, the board has had or or with county staff. So um, uh, first is I think there's been. Uh, some conversation uh, as it relates to roads, road funding, potential toll roads, um, and and there has been some conversation. What I would say, and I know that um, I think I uh, typed up a little memo and, and sent over a couple uh, reports uh, to the county that I think got out to you all. Um, there's a couple different sides of this. So one is there was some funding in a previous budget um, for MDOT to uh, do a study on the possibility of toll roads. And so uh, a report was given to MDOT um, December of 2022. I think you all have a copy of that um, looking at um, specific roads and, um, you know, interstates that that would potentially be good fits for toll roads. So. Um, they did identify some of those. I guess what I would say on that is from a political reality perspective, there's a lot more political hurdles outside of, um, you know, just a assessment that, yes, you could you could put a toll road here and, and the math makes sense and those types of things. And so um, I don't know that there's any real movement or heavy push here. We were with Senator Brinks, the uh, Senate Majority Leader yesterday asking her if there was anything on roads in general, uh, a big package. You'll recall that um, this governor, when she ran for governor the first time, advocated for a gas tax. Um, now that there is all Democratic control, there's still not a lot of urgency to do the massive gas tax increase. So not a lot of action on those, but at least you've got a, a memo and a copy of that report. The other report that I believe you've got a copy of is Public sector consultants uh, was hired to do a report for MIDA, which is the uh, state association of folks that do the actual building of roads. Um, and that project really looked at, at this declining gas tax revenue and trying to figure out how do we fund um, the gap funding for roads. Uh, they estimate, I want to say it's $1.8 billion annually that we're short uh, on road funding every single year. And that that paper sort of suggested five different outcomes as it related to road funding. Um, obviously, you know, increasing the gas tax under the current system as it exists today, um, as well as, you know, could you do some modifiers for it? And so um, right now we pay a, a gas tax um, we pay a gas tax on a gallon of gas. We could move that to a per dollar basis. We also pay sales tax on gas, but that sales tax revenue does not go to the roads. And so you could, you know, sort of shift where those dollars go. Um, that was part of the failed uh, ballot proposal that I think got fewer votes than Ross Perot uh, about a decade ago. So 
that one's riddled with some some battle scars. And then um, folks are starting to talk more about a a mileage based user fee or trying to pilot something. And that really comes out of this EV space where as as more and more folks are driving electric vehicles, um, you know, gas tax revenue continues to decline. And and of course, those folks are still using the roads as well. And so um, a number of folks have sort of suggested that we pilot some things uh, around mileage based user fees where, you know, folks would would pay based on how much they drive. Some other states are are doing some pilot projects on that, but I think we're we're a long ways away from a mass implementation of of that type of system, which comes with privacy concerns and or you know reporting concerns. Um, and so there's not a not a silver bullet on that. But that's the the latest as it relates to toll roads and road funding. Um, any questions on on that one? Uh, one of the uh, questions that I would have in all the discussions that take place about maintaining roads, um, you know, the only thing that seems to make sense to me is that it would solve the, elect the, the EV concern and all would be to tax tires, to have an excise tax, a federal tax on tires, not a state tax, but a federal tax. And ultimately, at the end of the day, it doesn't make any difference if you're driving a 13 inch tire or a 24.5 on the road, uh, the cost of the tire as a percentage with a tax on it seems like that's the only um, universal way to to fund roads in the future. And yet, in all and everything that I was sent, I mean, it it never seems to get discussed. They discussed everything from a mileage based thing and and incorporating GPS technology to to uh, to try to track how many miles you drive to a, coming up with a cost per mile to, but, but ultimately uh, the tire tax, a, a tire tax would, would solve this. Does it, does that ever get discussed in, in the dialogue and why not if it doesn't? Yeah, no, I haven't heard a lot of discussion on that. Um, admittedly, I haven't asked specifically about a tire tax either. So I'm happy to have some more conversations on that, but um, it, it's, not a um, you know widely talked about reported potential solution, if that makes sense. So um, you know, I think I think you know certainly happy to have some conversations with folks and and do some poking around on that. I think more globally here in Michigan, there's a little apathy on what to do with the roads. Um, you know, the this governor bonded, uh, you know, when she had a Republican legislature for some road construction, um, which you know, doesn't solve the long-term funding problem, but at least in the immediate need had led to larger construction problems or, or construction projects, which of course, um, depending on where you live and where that construction is, I'm sure you're hearing from some of your constituents about the orange barrels and, you know, uh, what it means in their world. So I don't know that, you know, tire tax or not, I don't know that we're going to see a massive roads package in the near future. Is the is the product is the problem that we have uniquely Michigan's or does it belong to all the states? Um, it, I think much like housing, everyone's got a housing problem, but it looks different everywhere, right? Um, uh, I will say a couple of years ago, by a couple, maybe maybe a decade now, Wisconsin, I believe, actually rolled back their uh, gas tax, um, but they had had a inflation modifier on their gas tax going back to, I think, the early 90s or late 80s. Um, you know, certainly Michigan's road problem is not aided by uh, our winter cycle. And, and when I think about years like this one where we get hit with, uh, you know, three days of, uh, you know, severe winter weather followed by, you know, 40 degree mild weather that that freeze thaw cycle does more damage here than it does in a state like Arizona. Um, certainly other states are using toll roads to, you know, offset wear and tear and costs. Um, uh, Ohio, most notably in the Midwest. Um, you know, I think everybody has this problem with how to do the EV stuff. And, and to your point, you know, a tire tax becomes a user tax because the more you drive, the faster you wear out your tires. Um, 
so I think I think what everybody has in common is this notion that you know gas tax, and of course we have a state gas tax and a national gas tax, feels like a um, a way that will not be viable for funding uh, this road system, you know, in the future. And it feels like every year uh, that wrap ramps up exponentially as EVs and hybrids become a little more, um, you know, uh, out there in the public and, and their popularity continues to grow. So um, I'll do some poking around on the tire tax, but I don't know that you're going to see this legislature this year do anything as it relates to road funding, whether that's tire tax, uh, vehicle miles traveled, uh, toll roads. I, I think... I think there's a lot of fancy reports out there, but I don't know that there's a lot of political will to do anything in the immediate future. Um, so Mike, um, just talking about the momentum that's being carried forward by the, the state legislature, I think that between MAC, the MML and other groups, they've done a pretty good job of painting the picture of just how much of a, a spend down is, is planned to occur under the governor's budget. Are you willing to hit some of the highlights and just explain just how big the numbers are? Yeah. Um, you know, I think, uh, so the governor spent everything, which politically I'm not sure I would have done with a democratic legislature. Um, and then we've had a couple of these SOAR projects, you know, the closest one to you, the most recent is that Marshall battery facility, um, you know, trying to, you know, draw these massive investments, but that is, spend down on on some of the surplus that's out there as well. Um, I will say the governor's budget uh, executive recommendation calls for um, you know some some good investment areas I think that are beneficial specifically for for local governments but but you guys as well. Um, a lot of emphasis on housing, blight elimination, missing middle, um, uh, gap funding, um, again, no silver bullets in housing, but at least they're trying to throw some resources at it. Um, law enforcement training dollars. Um, everybody in the state seems to be um, poaching from other uh, law enforcement agencies, and it is a uh, it is a race nobody can win. There's just not enough of them, and so there's some funding in there for um, training and trying to incent more people to go into that field. Um, there's 10 million for prose prosecutor, local prosecutor supports for digital improvements for case backload. I know that's something that um, we've talked about in the past that um, as folks have body cameras and there's just more um, you know, digital material that has to be made available that processing that comes with the cost. So there's some investment there. Um, probably not enough statewide if I'm being honest, but 10 million is a start. And then a lot of money in community development uh, grant programs. The governor proposed a, a regional empowerment grant, 200 million. That would go through the regional planners. Um, downtown economic grants, 100 million. Competitive Main Street Initiative, 135 million. Um, she will tout uh, increases in revenue sharing. I think the percentage of increase kind of depends on how you look at the math between one time and ongoing investments. But um, that's a 62 million dollar increase to the constitutional and uh, $89 million increase to the uh, statutory revenue sharing year over year from last year. Um, and so, you know, I expect that in early April, the legislature will trim some of these bigger initiatives uh, just because the money is, is sort of being double booked. You know, the governor is spending on some of these supplementals for SOAR and, and large projects, but you know, that doesn't take into account her budget recommendation. And then the Republicans did um, successfully, you know, ensure that we will have a state income tax rollback from 4.25 to 4.05%. And, and that, of course, cost the state um, ongoing revenue year after year as well. And so the math on some of these things doesn't quite add up at the moment, and it'll have to by the time we actually pass a budget. The other thing that I would just mention, just knowing that the broadband stuff is is big, um, the application window closed Monday or Tuesday. I'm getting my dates mixed up, but early this week. Um, and what we got yesterday or two days ago after the closing is that 
Um, the Robin Grants had 154 total applications, uh, $2.2 billion in total projects, and $1.3 billion in requested funding. There's about $230 million of grants available today for $1.3 billion in, in requests. Um, I know the county has been working and BC bit has been working real hard on those um, sort of community letters of support. Um, you know, I think, I think that's the differentiator. The process here, of course, is that these things are going to get scored. There'll be a challenge process. We won't really know until I think closer to the 4th of July where some of this stuff stands, but, um, but I just want to highlight that. And of course the, the back end of that is at the end of this year, those federal infrastructure dollars will hit the state for broadband. And so, um, you know, the number kind of keeps changing a little bit, but what I keep hearing is $1.8 billion of federal funding will hit the state uh, for broadband projects as well. My gut is that what they want to do is use this Robin grant to sort of test out this process, which of course is based on the old grants we used to have that had no money behind them. Um, but if this Robin grant works okay, um, then I think they'll try to push that that bead funding through there as well. So um, not a, I guess, not a state budget piece of it, but certainly a sizable amount of money, um, both coming and going between now and next year too. Happy to answer specific budget questions too, if folks have them. Anyone? Um, Mike, this is Terry. Um, just tapping in on the broadband discussion. Um, I do know, and you might be able to let us know if you've heard any more. There's at least two applications that have been submitted on uh, Berrien County's turf. <laughs> um, I, I would say on our behalf, but really it's the ISP that is submitting it, and Berrien County's been included. So we at least have two applications submitted. Have you yeah, heard any more? yeah. So what we're trying to get some detail on is how conflicting applications that overlap will be viewed and seen and judged. And so um, I've got a, a call over to the My High office, and I'm trying to just get a little clarity on, you know, we've we've seen the rubric, but you know, how does this play? And then, of course, the challenge process on the back end and my, I don't know, fear is the right word, but, you know, these ISPs are competitors, right? And so folks are, are potentially applying for the same places um, and then looking at their own data to potentially challenge the other's applications. And so we're trying to get a little more clarity on... Um, We've got this sort of this high level timeline on how this is supposed to go, but we're shy on details. So we're trying to get some of that. Um, and, you know, what we've been told is that, um, you know, community support will matter, that some of these things will take into account. But I, I am very interested in, you mentioned those two applications for Berrien County. Hey, Mike, you have two I'm I'm going to jump in real quick uh, to the uh, the commissioners. Mike's just referenced the importance of showing community support. And I just want to take a, a quick pause and show this is straight from uh, Berrien County's uh, web page. This is the BC bit page. Uh, Kim Fettison upstairs has just been working like a fiend to get every single support statement that we get as a county. We are posting onto the county's web page. These are support statements specifically for the internet service providers to help boost their, their Robin funding potential. But um, for the, the commissioners, I just wanted to take a sec and show you. I'm going to scroll through. You can see how much work has gone into this. So every member of um, the legislature for this area has uh, posted letters of support. We've got the college, the hospital, uh, the townships and then uh, local anchor institutions. But then as you continue scrolling down, these are all resolutions of support that have come from the townships. And to the townships credits, they, they've turned these around quickly. Mm -hmm. So this, is a, the, this really shows a whole lot of special meetings occurring or um, 
a very uh, concerted effort by the, the local units to get these statements of support ready. Mike's comment, we've really taken seriously, trying our best to make Comcast and MEC's proposals to the state stand out more than any other, any other county, knowing full well that there would likely be far more in requests than available funding. Sorry to interrupt, I just wanted to make sure that the board was aware of, of what effort has occurred and hopefully this helps. Mike, please continue. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think I think that is going to be the differentiator on some of this stuff and, and you know, credit to the BC bit um, going back to, you know, last summer having the conversation before the rubric was even out about, OK, two hundred and thirty million dollars sounds like a lot of money, but it's really not when we talk about the need. And so, you know, obviously we finally got the final number of requests and applications um, in this week, but I do think that the work that the BC, excuse me, the BC bid has done, the county staff have done. Um, my my hope here and and my gut tells me that those letters of support, especially knowing how tight the timeline and the turnaround is for it, will go a long way. Um, I haven't done a deep dive in every other application or municipality or those types of things, but I would hedge a bet that you guys will be in the top five percent as far as community support, letters of support um, for the investment in your area. And, and my hope is that that's gonna pay massive dividends as we get through this process and, and we'll see some investment in your area. And so credit to, again, the, the BC bit, the, the commission and uh, county staff. Jerry? Just a follow up on that too, Mike, because I know you talked about the, the challenge process so there's a 45 day window of, of comments and challenges once the initial uh, grant awards happen. One of the things that BCBIT is working on, and again, I thank this board um, for their foresight of hiring DCS technologies to help us to do the parcel mapping. Um, that is going to help us. We're in the midst of, of challenging some of the FCC <clears throat> fabric map which is what some of this funding is tied to, mostly for bead, but that FCC layer is, uh, fabric layer is going to be critical in regards to figuring out specifically what parcels are served and unserved, which ultimately will mean <clears throat> funding or no funding for those parcels. And so again, th this board taking action and making this a priority has helped us get over this finish line, so. Um, we're not quite there yet, but we're running hard. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Okay, I think the last, the last thing. Would... Oh, I'm sorry, Mike. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say the last thing I was going to mention is I know some folks may be coming up uh, in late April. I believe uh, Mac has their legislative conference. Um, and so uh, working with Brian and, and trying to figure out uh, how best to do some, some meetings. Uh, lawmakers won't be here on that Monday, but they should be here that Tuesday, Wednesday. And so, um, you know, we're not into April yet, but uh, we're halfway through March already. And so we're going to start working on um, how to maximize your time while you're up here. Don't want to steal you away from everything that conference has to offer. But if you're up here in Lansing, trying to um, do some impactful meetings with with lawmakers while you're here, too. And that was literally what I was going to bring up is uh, to the other board. Annette has send, sent a couple of reminders to the full board on the, the MAC conference. If you've got a desire to go, let her know as soon as possible. She'll be taking care of uh, the, the, the registration and the details. So please, if you haven't seen the email from her, take a look at it. Okay. All right, I'm going to head to nine o'clock committee, but if there's any other questions, get them to, to Brian and he can track me down. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Okay. Um, public comments. Anyone have any? Just me today. All right. <laughs> Why not? Um, other business. You don't think coming so much early. Any? Okay, then let's break.